Welcome back. We pick it up in Austin Century, making the trip to face the Packers, and this game was ugly to start. Opening Century drive, they hand it off, but the ball is free, and it looks here like that's Wyatt Thoma on the recovery for Austin. The Pack take over, and QB Jake Lang here going to roll out right, looking to pass, fires this one, but it's picked off by Owen Murgis. It's him with the INT, a couple of rough possessions for both teams here. Go, jump ahead, the Panthers would go three and out, so Pack have it, give it to Joe Walker, he breaks some tackles, and says, get your hands off me, and he's in for six. It's a seven nothing, Austin lead. We jump ahead to the second quarter here, Packers on the punt, but that snap is high, goes into the end zone, kicker chooses to field it, and Century takes him out for a good field position. Tough play there, and when you're that close, all you gotta do is punch it in. That's Cole Ebeling, does just that, gets across the line. That's a touchdown for Century. Century goes on to win this one 28-20 over Austin, then Owatonna, a big win, 26-7 over Northfield. Good win on the road. Next, we head out to Mitchell Cunningham Field, where the 0-4 Byron Bears hosted 3-1 Mankato East late in the first half. No score, Byron attempts a long field goal. Bradley Pavone's kick. Had the distance, but it sails wide left to keep the game scoreless. Next possession, the Cougars were forced to punt. Matthew Frigard back deep for Byron, but the ball hits the turf. Mankato East is all over it. Cougars get the ball. They turn the turnover into points on the ensuing possession. Quarterback Jacob Eggert evades the rush, extends the play, then finds Brady Hoffner. Hoffner. Takes this one all the way to the house. East would make the PAT and take a 7-0 lead. Final seconds of the half. Byron trying to get something going on offense. QB Nick Netsky completes the pass to Frigar, but the ball pops loose. The Cougars have it. They took a 7-0 lead into the break. Mankato East comes to Byron. They leave that one with the win, 17-0. East has won four games in a row for the first time since 2007. Next, we head out to Blooming Prairie. Double A's top ranked Awesome Blossoms hosting 3 and 1. St. Clair Loyola, first quarter, BP up 7 0. Their defense gets a huge sack of bouquet of Blossoms. Meet at the quarterback to help keep the Spartans off the scoreboard. Ensuing possession, the up tempo BP offense went to work. QB Drew Kittleson hits Tyler Archer on the shovel pass, and Archer takes it up the sideline for a big gain. BP in business. A few plays later, Kittleson. Finds Colin Jordanson wide open in the end zone. BP now up 14 to nothing, not looking back. Later in the quarter, the duo would hook up again. Kittleson fires a strike over the middle. Jordanson lays out, makes the grab. Then later in the drive, Kittleson looks left. Guess who it is? Jordanson gets to the pylon. That's a touchdown. Blossoms now up 21 to nothing. The top ranked Awesome Blossoms win that one 42 to zero. Last year, Blooming Prairie played in Class A. Now they're up in Double A. They're still the number one team. They still are shutting out opponents and putting up a lot of points. Boy, they're a great team elsewhere. Rushford Peterson debuted in the rankings uh, last week or two weeks ago. Beat down of Cotter tonight. They win that one 66 to 12. Wow, great win there for the Trojans elsewhere. Big game down in Harmony tonight. Randolph against Fillmore Central, two three and one teams. Fillmore Central now four and one. They shut out Randolph, 19 to nothing. Elsewhere, Triton, they beat St. Charles 22 to 20. Thrilling into this one, Owen Petershawn threw a touchdown pass to Braxton Money Kaisen with 15 seconds left for the win in that one. Call it money for a reason. Next, we head up to Goodhue. Three and one Wildcats ho hosting one and three Caledonia tonight. First half, the Wildcats wanted to start off with a bang. As QB Will Upshaw looks deep, finds Adam Ponslet, but the ball pops loose and the Warriors are all over it. Caledonia football, ensuing drive, the Warriors found the end zone. QB Lewis Doyle looks left, finds wide receiver Logan Bonzi. That's a touchdown, Warriors up seven nothing early. Second quarter, Goodhue trying to get something going on offense. Running back Ethan Matthews goes to the outside for a nice gain. But just moments later, lightning struck. The officials had to stop the game. Warriors up 7-0. Now this one, a thriller, 27-21. Caledonia in overtime. Goodhue has the ball now. Caledonia again in the lead at 27-21 in OT. Elsewhere, Zambroda Mazeppa, 20-0 over La Crescent. Good home win for Zambroda Mazeppa. And next we go out to pick up Leroy Ostrander and Grand Meadow. This year, 10th ranked Leroy Ostrander and Grand Meadow. Leroy Oystrander working it here, get a good gain. 
and that's going to get them in the Super Larks territory. That drive would stall, though. Fourth quarter, QB Chase Johnson trying to make something happen, and he left something. Picks up the loose ball, but has nowhere to run. Grand Meadow takes over. It's a handoff to Dustin Copley. He's going to break a tackle, goes back right, and talk about daylight. This here got to be one of my favorite plays. Look, Ma, no hands on the block there to get him all the way <laughs> to the end zone. That's a touchdown for Grand Meadow. And they go on to win this one 44-36 against 10th ranked Leroy Ostrander over in Spring Grove. Southland gets the road win 46-14. Another page here, Houston with a 12-6 win over Lyle Pacelli. Then Mabel Ken with a 45-8 win over Medalia. Boy, once again, the nine-man football in our section, section one, just the best in the state. All right, guys, don't go anywhere. We still have our KTTC Play of the Week and more of tonight's action coming up. Plus, the RCTC Yellow Jackets close out their home schedule tomorrow from head coach Derek Hintz after this quick timeout.